oldest cave art identified in North America. There is no end to the outrageously interesting things to discover in this vast, wondrous, and strange world we call home. All it takes is a healthy curiosity about the world around us. One fact about the planet's geography cannot be denied. Caves are mysterious and enticing places. You can't look at a cave without wondering what's inside of it. The frightening aspects of eerie caves are only one aspect of them. Ancient and prehistoric artifacts have been found in the caves. The habitats of organisms that we haven't even yet found exist in the caves. It is difficult to predict what fresh facts they would offer us in the form that might further inspire a different or revised version of history. Let's explore the most shocking and disturbing discoveries made by scientists in caves. Joseph Henry Loveless. The narrative of Joseph Henry Loveless began in the late 19th century. He was frequently detained in connection with, among other things, his activities as a bootlegger and a counterfeiter, and he became quite adept at eluding capture. Everyone was aware that he was a pretty bad person. That included his first wife, who filed for divorce at a period when it was almost unheard of. He was remarried to a woman named Agnes after his divorce. Up until May 5, 1916, they were camping outside of Dubois, Idaho. She was dismembered with an axe at that point, and Loveless was apprehended after attempting to flee the area. Predictably, he managed to get away and disappeared. It wasn't until 2019 that his last fate became a grisly murder mystery, and a little less enigmatic. A burlap-wrapped torso was discovered by a family who were exploring a cave outside of St. Anthony, Idaho, back in 1979. After another amateur explorer discovered a hand in 1991, two legs and the second arm were discovered during the subsequent examination. Later technological developments brought about the DNA Doe Project's involvement, and the remains were examined and linked to a man who was 87 years old at the time, Joseph Henry Lovelace's grandson. Despite the fact that there are no known suspects in his death, Clark County Sheriff Bart May remarked, back in 1916, most likely the locals took care of the problem. An underwater graveyard filled with giant lemur bones, one of the oddest and wealthiest islands in the world, Madagascar is home to a wide variety of animals that cannot be found anywhere else. That has been the case for a very long period, and humans also destroyed that when they arrived there more than 2,000 years ago. At that time, the island was home to megafauna, including elephant birds and huge tortoises. Then, it wasn't. No one has been able to pinpoint exactly what took place to produce such a drastic change in Madagascar's environment, but they have gained an excellent understanding of the species that perished. When paleontologists explored the undersea Aran Cave in 2014, they found that the bottom was covered in ancient megafauna remnants, along with a few species that are still alive today. There was a lot of wonderful stuff there, but the most interesting things were the huge lemur remains that were the size of gorillas. Given that the bones are 82 feet underwater, it is unclear how they got there. The current is believed to have transported them there, dropped them and left them there undisturbed while they were first defleshed and then semi-fossilized. And that's just what they discovered on the surface. The discovery, which was deemed extraordinary, offered a special chance for experts to better understand what Madagascar's prehistoric terrain would have been like. 17 Sizable Coffins a group of youngsters were exploring Arthur's Seat in Scotland on a June afternoon in 1836 when they just so happened to come to find what would later become one of the country's strangest mysteries. National Museum Scotland claims that while on their explorations, the lads happened onto a small cave. They discovered 17 miniature coffins inside the cave, each with a figure carefully dressed in tiny handmade clothing and snuggled inside. A few pieces of slate had been used to block the cave's entrance. Newspapers at the time reported on the discovery and immediately began yelling about witchcraft, demonology, and black magic, which was only natural. Others offered less bizarre theories, such as the notion that the dolls were effigies of friends who had perished in other regions or had gone missing at sea, and their proper ceremonies had been performed on the dolls in their stead. That's really nice, but the prevailing theory isn't quite as endearing. The 17 coffins are now believed to have been created and interred as a memorial to the 17 victims of infamous body snatchers William Burke and William Hare. They got their start when a boarder who shared the residence with Hare had the unfortunate circumstance of passing away while owing him money. 
They collected by selling him to a nearby anatomy school. Who produced them? Why? Was it actually intended as a memorial to Burke and Hare's victims? We probably won't ever find out. 11,000 years old mine. The daring required to explore underwater caverns is entirely different than that required to explore land-based caves. Two divers were engaged in such activity in 2017, and it was there that they discovered something truly incredible after diving more than half a mile into a cave beneath the Yucatan Peninsula, and a threshold's appearance marked the beginning of it. After swimming over that unmistakably man-made barrier, they arrived inside what was later discovered to be an 11,000-year-old mine. What is the mine for? The brilliant red pigment known as ochre was previously extracted by prehistoric humans who utilized it for everything from cave paintings to funeral ceremonies and as a mosquito repellent. The location was referred to as a time capsule of human activity, filled with the remains of tools, fires, and even a number of cairns, which are rock mounds used by miners to maintain their bearings while they were underground. When the location was thoroughly investigated, it eventually helped to throw light on the use of a number of other mines, and there was a lot of extremely high-quality ochre, according to archaeologists. Interestingly, myths about caves and the afterlife imply that the pigments that came from such a deep cave certainly held some spiritual significance. The fact that this originated from a hallowed location, and that a journey inside the cave was made just to obtain it, may be of great significance. Kabayan Mummies It's safe to conclude that individuals who interred their loved ones there understood their significance much more than UNESCO can convey. The Kabayan Mummy Burial Caves of the Philippines are now recognized by UNESCO for their cultural significance. The Ibaloi tribe used the caves for their embalming practices, which were reminiscent of those used in ancient Egypt. Those who were aware of their finite lifespan would begin the mummification process by ingesting a salty mixture, and the process would be finished over the weeks that followed the death. The bodies would then be finished and deposited in the ancient burial caves, where they were, relatively, recently uncovered by loggers, where they would then be interred in elaborate wooden coffins. With the entrance of Europeans in the 16th century, the traditional traditions had come to a stop, yet mummies had survived for a very long period. The opening of the caves caused a variety of issues. Since the caverns are no longer used yet are still revered by the Ibaloi, it quickly became necessary to safeguard them from pests, fungus, and humans being, well, people. Since the caves were found, the mummies have undergone significant research, and some, like the chieftain Apo Anu, have been reburied there. There's also a really interesting postscript to this. According to archaeology, Research into the stunning tattoos discovered on many of the mummies has enabled contemporary descendants to duplicate their ancestors' tattoos. Children's Mayan Handprints Archaeologists from the National Institute of Anthropology and History of Yucatan claim that they discovered the cave nearly two decades before making their discovery public, but they chose to keep it a secret for fear of it being harmed. The spookiest part of the discovery was the 137 black and crimson handprints on the wall, which stood out among the Maya artifacts, which included pottery and bones. It is thought that the cave, which is situated beneath a sacred Saba tree, had a crucial role in the ceremonies of young Maya, who lived about 1,200 years ago. According to archaeologist Sergio Grosjean, children are thought to have visited the cave to first mark the stone with their black handprints, which symbolized death, but that didn't mean they were going to be killed. Rather, death from a ritual perspective, followed by their red handprints, which was a reference to war or life. Additionally, it wasn't just a routine ceremony. Children who were born during the handprint era experienced a profound shift in their culture. It would have been dreadful to be alive during a period of droughts that were so severe that they caused widespread death and the downfall of cities that had once been prosperous. A setup base for the dead. The sculptor's cave in Scotland is difficult to access, and even if someone does, time is running out. The cave on Moray's sandstone sea cliffs is only reachable during low tide. Now that a complete 3D model of the cave has been created, archaeologists can investigate it safely from another location. According to Canterbury Christchurch University, more of the cave's secrets have been revealed since it was first found in the 1920s. 
It was originally utilized circa 1000 BC and is one of the few locations where evidence of Scotland's prehistoric dead has been discovered. According to Ian Armit of the University of Bradford, this is the time when prehistoric people practiced excarnation or exposure burial. The dead were left out in the open to slowly deteriorate and rot while leaving clues that the living would continue to visit during this time. There were numerous Pictish engravings, some bones that appeared to have been defleshed and polished, as well as a place where people could cook while keeping an eye on their forebears. The site was occupied for over 1500 years till it was abandoned in the 4th century AD. That came shortly after one of the most shocking discoveries. At least nine people were executed and beheaded in the cave in the 3rd century. A tiny family member. We frequently hear about many animal species, but what about various human species? Yes, the fact that so little is known about them is most unexpected. So when news broke in 2004 that researchers had found the fossilized remains of a tiny person who had lived nearby and probably perished in Indonesia's Liang Bua cave, things got a bit interesting and problematic. The original bones were reportedly damaged by a big deal sort of paleoanthropologist who was studying them in an effort to refute the existence of the people known as the hobbits. This happened shortly after a group of scientists from Australia and Indonesia announced they had discovered a new species of human and named it Homo floresiensis. Today, we understand that the doubters were mistaken and that the first skeleton actually gave us our first glimpse of a distinct species of humans. More members of the 30-year-old woman species have subsequently been discovered and she would have been roughly three and a half feet tall in life. They lived between 100,000 and 60,000 years ago and it's been argued by skeptics that there may have been a link between them and the local pygmies of today. The concept that the two are related has been disproven by DNA analysis, which implies something equally intriguing. Independent groups of humans evolved in the same manner, twice. A genuine toxic hell on Earth. For 5.5 million years, Mobile Cave in Romania has been cut off from the outside world. The cave was blocked by a fallen chunk of limestone at the same time that our prehistoric ancestors were just beginning to consider developing into humans. The globe had entirely independently evolved when scientists opened the top in the 21st century. The cave, which was found in 1986, can only be reached by way of a lengthy shaft and several limestone tunnels. It is a comfortable 77 degrees Fahrenheit, but due to a pool of sulfuric water at the bottom that spews hydrogen sulfide whenever anything breaks the surface, it smells like rotten eggs. That indicates that it is extremely lethal and that staying there for more than a few hours would result in severe organ failure. There is an equally bizarre life that has developed. One of the fundamental components is a form of chemosynthetic bacteria which requires carbon to exist in the same manner that life on the surface requires oxygen. Yes, scientists are trying to understand more about these life forms in order to come up with solutions to the problem of various greenhouse gases. More than 50 distinct species have been found, and the majority of them are creepy. The king of the cave, a venomous centipede that is just about two inches long but is so lethal that serves as the cave's apex predator, is in addition to cave leeches, snails, scorpions, and spiders. The oldest winery in the world. According to world history, the Arini Cave Complex, also known as Trecuneri, or the Bird's Cave, is situated in what is now Armenia and is thought to have been inhabited as early as 6000 BC. Numerous artifacts from the intermittent history of human habitation have been found by archaeologists, and one of these finds is the world's oldest vineyard at the time being. Archaeologists, including a group from the University of California, concluded excavating a site that had been found for the first time in 2007 in 2011. It contained a wine press, containers for making, storing, and of course consuming wine, as well as the biological byproducts of the fermentation. Grape skins and seeds were among them. All of it is really amazing, but the most startling fact was the age. The old winery had been in existence for 6,100 years. Even though people had been making wine for a while, this was the first type of large-scale production facility ever discovered, hence the word winery is significant. The group came to the conclusion that the procedure should be fairly well known. After being crushed and pressed, the grapes were allowed to ferment inside the cave, which also occurred to have the ideal conditions for producing and storing wine. 
It turns out that it also makes a ton of sense. Previous research has indicated that grape domestication and cultivation date back to the prehistoric inhabitants of Armenia and Georgia, the largest crystals in the world. It may be an understatement to call the Cueva de los Cristales, also known as the Cave of Crystals, the Sistine Chapel of Crystals, according to geologist Juan Manuel Garcia Ruiz. In 2000, miners working on a new tunnel discovered something incredible hidden 1,000 feet below Peru's Nica Mountain and Chihuahuan Desert. When they broke into the cavern, they discovered it was filled with some of the largest crystals in the world, some of which were up to 36 feet long and 55 tons in weight. That is roughly equivalent to the weight of nine elephants for comparison. Since then, a lot of study has been conducted in the caves, which is challenging because the inside is almost entirely damp and the air is so hot that it cools as it enters the lungs. Geologists have found that the entire structure began to be built some 26 million years ago with the aid of some significant volcanic activity. There is currently a more urgent question than how were they formed regarding the crystals which have been developing for hundreds of millions of years. The issue at hand is how to safeguard them. Although the natural state of the cave was ideal for the development of these enormous crystals, mining activity nearby has altered that environment and they now run the risk of being destroyed or dehydrated. Carvings by the Knights Templar A crew of laborers was dispatched to the Royston, near Cambridge Butter Market in 1742. Because it was the middle of the 18th century, they offered the services of a young local lad to be dropped down the hole and investigate what was down there after moving a millstone they had discovered lodged in the ground. What he discovered is today known as Royston Cave. It was created by humans from chalk and covered in engravings. There are panels honoring St. Christopher, St. Lawrence, St. Catherine, and a military figure thought to be St. George, in addition to a part telling the account of Christ's resurrection. Additionally, there is a depiction of the crucifixion, representations of King Richard the I, and oddly, there are also images of old fertility goddess Sheila Nagig and other pagans. Aside from the fact that it was probably discovered and carved in the middle of the 15th century, a large number of little figurines are still unidentifiable. No one knows what it is. However, there is a widely held belief that it was once used as a hidden meeting site by the Knights Templar. One of the carvings is often seen as a tribute to the renowned Templar leader Jacques de Molay. Other speculations include that it was the hermit's dwelling at one time or that it was carved as a private chapel for Lady Rosia, the wife of William the Conqueror's steward. Who knows? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.